Good morning, and this is Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. With me to dissect it this morning are our Monday regulars, uh, Libros Oshoma in studio. Good morning, Libros. And of course, remotely, we have Ai Osori, who's a, a social commentator. Good morning, Ai. Good morning, Amaka. And good to have you this morning. I'm glad to be here, too. Great. Uh, and so is Libras also nodding here in affirmation already. <laughs> All right. So we'll begin with a couple of papers. We have a Tribune, we have The Punch, we have The Nation, but we'll begin with Tribune already displayed there. And it says Nigeria records over 125 grid collapses in seven years. Uh, that's on the front page. CBN releases guidelines for assessing health research uh, development grant on page seven of the Nigerian Tribune. And the do gubernatorial election. Um, fireworks begin in court over APC primaries. That story is inside the newspaper. The federal government secures $1.5 billion fund to complete a Jaokuta steel firm. Uh, marketers not allowed to fix fuel prices. That's according to PPPRA. And the big story for Tribune there is IPOB using Christianity to wage war against Nigeria. That's according to the presidency. There was a statement released by Garbashehu. Uh, spends 85,000 monthly on campaigns. And that story is on page two of uh, Tribune newspaper. Uh, Nigeria's 100-day journey by NCDC. Right? Task force arrests COVID-19 patient who escaped from Imo at Ondo Market. How reckless can that be? That story is on page 10. Foreign powers uh, sabotaging the federal government, according to Senate President, on the front page there. But it's continued inside the newspaper on page 2, I believe. Anambra community banishes 25 women for alleged support for cult activities. Wow. Stock market. Investors lose 109 billion naira in five days. No good at all. And finally, Ondo ripples in PDP as a Karadolu's deputy may resign this week. All right, we will begin the stock market, or 119 rather, in uh, the stock market investors lose 119 billion naira in five days. Thank you for that correction. All right, so we'll begin with you, Libras. Which story is catching your attention? Yeah, um, this IPOB morning? using Christianity to, to wage war, war against, against Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria. I, I find this um, laughable, really, um, coming from uh, the presidency. Laughable? Yeah, because um, against the backdrop of um, um, Colonel Umar Dangiwa's letter last week, mm -hmm. um, he raised some germane issues, and one of them was the um, issue of uh, nepotism. And um, I think that President can do well by addressing that sole issue of nepotism squarely. If he does that, all of this um, campaign by IPOP will become very, very insignificant. And this dichotomy of Christian Muslim dichotomy will become very significant. A situation where some persons, you know, parading themselves as a Meeti Allah, mm. because the Meeti Allah that we know those days do not issue those kind of press statements. Uh, parade themselves as Meiti Allah, claiming that uh, Nigerian belongs to them and they will rule Nigerian forever. And there is no statement whatsoever, no response whatsoever coming from the presidency. Uh, you know, that's also, you know, when you, 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 you behave like that, you give, you know, you fund the embers of um, sectionalism and right. agitations from, you know, other regions. And, and, and so when you now begin to respond, Mm. to, you know, those people who are not bearing arms and then you leave out those bearing arms, you know, also you find the embers of sectionalism and nepotism. And mm -hmm. so that's why um, I think the president should redirect his energy to, because the question will be asked, the issues, allegations raised by some of these organizations like IPOB, mm -hmm. are they genuine, are they germane? And so if you allow these things to fester, you know, some of some people will use it for their personal interest and selfish interest to, you know, seek 
cheap popularity abroad, like they have said. And so, but there is a foundation for it, mm -hmm. you know, and the foundation is this nepotism. And, um, which and, is a big issue. Yes, which is a big issue. And, mm -hmm. and, and so the, God, the only way government can correct it, you know, create a level playing field for so many people so many regions and then allow people also to you know to have a say mm. in some of these things and once you do that you will silence some mm. of these ipob uh, gladiators overnight gladiators <laughs> they brought choice of words all right i what's your thought i agree with liberals i mean it's very important to be to appear even if you <laughs> to be balanced mm. In a country where we are, you know, sadly very divided along ethnic and religious lines, uh, and many people have actually said in the last four years, five years, we've seen an increase in these divisions, I think it is important that the presidency at least is balanced in terms of its reaction. So you don't pick what to react to. You react to everything. And I agree. If, if people have made allegations against your, your administration about nepotism and even corruption and other things, then you, you should respond to it. And not in a way that's defensive, but in a way that provides facts and clarity so as to move people forward and, and build trust. It's, it's really very unfortunate, honestly. The, we do not deserve the type of leadership that we've been seeing in Nigeria over the last couple of years, uh, even in the last, let's just say, 20 years, we deserve a lot better. And I really wish more Nigerians would take an active interest in politics and governance uh, and realize that everything that's wrong in our lives, whether it's from no light, because I heard the headline about how many systemic breakdowns we've had, mm -hmm. whether it's from no light to just not being able to manage COVID properly, it all comes down to governance. It all comes down to leadership. Right. Okay. Um, Libras, I heard you agreeing with um, Aisha there. there yes, something? yes, 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 completely. Um, that's where some people will tell you that we have um, the worst of us ruling the best of us. That we, we have, have the uh, worst of us ruling, ruling the, the best, best of, of us. us. And then oh, wow, we're talking that's a about ser serious you know, one. having 125 grid collapse in seven years. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, you, you expect that by now, with, I remember in 2000 and 2007, uh, May or April, April, March, April of 2007, the then Minister for Information, um, Frank Wake Jr., had done Britain and postulating in public that in six months, power failure will be a thing of the past in Nigeria. That the Obasanjo government. This was in 2007, right? This was in 2007. Uh, that the Obasanjo government had done so much. But I, don't even, I don't even want to talk about the fella, uh, uh, water, light, food, house, mm -hmm. you know. So, the Obasanjo's government had done so much and that in six months, power failure would be a thing of the past. And then, but well, fortunately, the Obasanjo left and we discovered that he spent 16 billion buying darkness. And the probe ended up, you know, accusations and counter accusations. And here we are again. Mm -hmm. We started another round. We keep, then Gulag Jonathan came and said that um, they were going to increase the capacity uh, by, that. this was in, um, this, they made that statement in June. Um, that by December of that year, they were going to increase the, the electricity capacity. And by October, the Minister for Power came out to say, no, what they meant was that they were going to have the capacity to generate, mm -hmm. not that they would, you know, <laughs> semantics. Yeah, and semantics. here we are, you know, these, were, these are the same things that we campaign with, electricity, good roads, affordable housing, water. And year in, year out, we use them to campaign. Just and the bare necessities, really. Yes, the bare necessities <laughs> of life. Wow. And yet we still can't provide them. And then the next thing you hear of, you hear so much corruption everywhere. You hear of nepotism. You hear people who ordinarily ought not to be relevant becomes very relevant mm. because they pretend to now speak for their people, you know, be, by the actions and inaction of government. And it's, 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 it's very, very sad. I grew up in a Muslim-dominated environment. Right. I can recite the Fatiha as I am here now. I studied IROK in school. We could, we relate together then. We didn't know who was a Christian, who mm -hmm. was a Muslim. It didn't matter. We, we didn't matter to us. We attended the same school. We, Muslims did Bible knowledge. But today, those little things that used to bring us together are the things that are dividing us because you have the best, the, the worst, worst of, of us, us ruling the best of us. And until we realize that we are the ones in opposition and not the politicians, that is the day we will now suddenly move from darkness to light. Hmm. We need to move from darkness to light. I am for the light. I, one other story yeah. is catching your attention there. Well, I mean, in addition to the 
the story about the Abia state governor, and I mean, in, in a, I, I read the headline and I smiled a bit. I mean, I understand why that is news because obviously he he's he's ruling, and I'm being deliberate about using that word, ruling mm-hmm. a state, not leading it. But you know, it just it sits. It, it makes me think about how many of the regular ordinary Nigerians every day are refusing to take coronavirus seriously right. because they keep seeing it as a disease that if, affects big people in quotes. So I just thought, you know, maybe our news, our media would like to feature just regular people once in a while, even if it's a Sunday special or Saturday special, that just shows regular people who have got this disease as well and try and feature them even on the radio or in the news. Otherwise, we'll continue finding it hard to make regular Nigerians, who are the majority, Mm -hmm. to take this disease seriously. Meanwhile, people are dying. And of course, as usual, we're not really tracking the numbers. You know, we know for a fact that many people are dying from COVID-related diseases at home, but it's not being captured as COVID numbers. And we're also seeing that, in fact, I think this state with the governor, Abia State, is seeing the highest recorded mm-hmm. cases. So we're really at the beginning. We're still, we still haven't reached our peak, oh, mm-hmm. but it seems that we're already tired of the topic and we're not paying enough attention yeah, to tired. tracing, to tracking, to trying to diversify and decentralize. And I think Liberos made a point about this last week. We do need to decentralize. Mm-hmm. and But the thing is, what are the guidelines for decentralizing? Absolutely. You know, as you tell governors to to sit up and do these things, then is NCDC also ready to decentralize? You know, do we have capacity in the states to do t- testing and tracing? Are we going to expand our partnerships to include donors to civil society? Because obviously this is beyond just the state at this time. Mm-hmm. So for me, the, the, that, that was something that was interesting to me when I, when I saw that headline. Mm. I mean, very valid points that you've raised there. And talking about um, featuring regular, I mean, you know, ordinary Nigerians who have survived from this. You know, we've done that here on Plus TV Africa. You know, we, we brought in a survivor yeah. a couple of times. We've done, I believe, two or three of them. But even I can mm. tell you for a fact, uh, as at last week, Wednesday, I was out and about. And, um, you know, we did a report on Maltov, the popular Maltov mm-hmm. markets that you know. I can tell you, mm. I, I, I can't remember the number of persons as soon as they saw us with the camera who were saying, oh, there's no COVID-19, you people. There's nothing like coronavirus. And, and I'm, ah. I mean it, mm-hmm. not one, not two. Sensitizing. You know, so. yeah. So it, it, it also means that I'm not so sure. We are mo- fatigued. But maybe we're, ti- we're tired of hearing it. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Just, mm. I'm moving on. Yes. Yeah, because the government attitude to it mm. also makes it very difficult you know, to establish the fact that there is, you know, coronavirus. The situation where, you know, even the amount that is being spent mm. and the way government handles this thing in sincerity. And there's some people, you know, have a COVID industry where people are making so much money. COVID and like industry. Asha just said, That's it sad. makes it look also as if it's only for, you know, a- elites. And then gradually, we, this is our copy and paste our attitude. And so... You know, it's almost as if we are not doing anything. You say the borders are locked, and yet people are traveling. You say, you know, don't go out, and but you see, you know, some, uh, what do you call it, top government functionaries flying private jet to go get new wives. You know, so that attitude mm-hmm. is not sending the right messages. Mm-hmm. We are seeing, you know, people resign in other climb for, for flouting the COVID-19 rule. But here, there are no consequences. So when you do that, and then when the numbers were in the hundreds, you lock down, now that they are in, 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 in 12,000, mm-hmm. you, you open up, and then you're even planning of open, opening churches and mosques and, you know. So with all of that, how do you not expect? And then the sens- sensitization is very, very low, mm-hmm. very poor. Some mm-hmm. even people now that wear masks, they wear it, you know, as uh, maybe a, a decoration or because it's, it's a fashion it, piece. Yes, or because in some cases you insist that if you can't go into a place without face masks. Mm-hmm. So when you have all of that, you know, coupled with the level of literacy in in the country, mm-hmm. you are going to have this. Uh, yeah, I mean it's unfortunate. Uh, and, and then lastly, sorry, yeah, go ahead. you also now have this stigmatization. Even yes. people who are dying at home, nobody wants to. If they tell, if you tell them, ah, this should be COVID related, they say, no, God forbid, I rejected. My mama, mama no die, my partner no die for COVID mm. um, this thing. You know. So and then even states would not want to. You know, also actually, you know, re- reveal the actual number. Is it not these numbers that you feed the mm-hmm. NCDC that they will reveal? You know, so for stigmatization also. So to give the impression that, ah, yes, yeah, so these states, you, they have less cases. This one have more cases. So all of this, Why we, are, we, we don't have... Why should allowed to go into the isolation centers, even to allow the media, you know, because, you know, you recall the time of uh, Ebola. People saw a lot of, you know, um, people who were dying 
in hospitals, how it was unfolding, and bef as soon as Maybe Nigeria because of the infectious nature, nature of no, the disease, and so no, I mean. I don't completely agree. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I disagree with you. Anyways, we will proceed uh, to the Punch newspaper. Um, and it said, job losses loom in beverage companies as production drops, um, page 20 of the Punch newspaper. NNPC and others planning uh, 21 billion naira hospitals in 12 states. All right, according to Mamura. That story is on page 10. Contributory pension assets uh, rose by 359 billion naira in four months. Um, and we also have, Dad will run for 2023 presidency, says Atiku's son. Okay, piece of information there. Now, crisis looms as COVID-19 cases outnumber bed spaces in states. Did we not say we'll get to this point? Also? All right, you also have the COVID figures up there. Uh, Nigeria with 6,994 bed spaces as of Friday, battling with uh, 8,065 active cases. So we are short of about 1,000 plus. Um, patients with diabetes and hypertension and others ruled out of home care. Um, we will take a look now at this and more stories. Picture stories there of the road situation, uh, I believe. Um, all right, let's begin with you. I, what's yeah. interesting? Crisis. Well, we, are, we, we are out of bed spaces. We imagined that, that this will happen at some point. Yes, we did. And I'm, I'm wondering, actually, even though I, 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 maybe liberals or you will have the details in front of you since you have the papers there. But mm -hmm. when we say we're out of bed spaces, are we counting the makeshift, the makeshift COVID response centers all, that we've all seen? All the bed spaces no, available. All bed spaces, all mm -hmm. bed spaces available. I mean, it's, we knew we were going to get here. So it comes back to some of the things that we were talking about in at the start of the of the coronavirus pandemic when we yeah. shut down, which is that what's how are we helping people treat these things at home? Mm -hmm. For me, honestly, I still see um, the same way, you know, we, we understand that many people are asymptomatic. They don't have or some have symptoms. They're not very serious. Mm -hmm. What do people do to make sure they don't need to get into the hospitals, you know, and take up these beds if they don't need them? Because as pointed out, people who have other diseases, whether it's uh, hypertitis or diabetes or, right. you know, other life threatening diseases that also need access to the hospital. In fact, as we're talking about this, my eye caught online a story about 30 women in Makoko who died pregnant women yeah. who died because they couldn't get access mm -hmm. and get to the hospital on time. And we're hearing a lot of these stories. I think two weeks ago, there was a similar story. A woman who was in labor was on her way to the hospital, was held at some stupid checkpoint until yeah. she bled to death. Mm. So who is tracking all? These are all, for me, COVID-related deaths because they're not people dying of COVID, but they're people dying because of our mismanagement of how the coronavirus pandemic is, is playing out in our country. Mm. So we really need to see a lot more. I mean, Again, it comes back to communication. It comes back to the state's response. It comes back to behavioral change communication and just empowering people with this information. We just talked about stigmatization. If we know that people are hiding these things, where is the communication coming from? Again, we're back to our influencers. We see a lot of people who have huge influence over millions of Nigerians, whether it's the imams or the pastors or traditional rulers, who are not using their power and their influence to speak about these things. How do we engage them and get them to lend their voice to this? They are the ones who their followers, in quotes, look up to. That's Can right. they speak on these issues and help them understand the gravity and what the options are? For me, that's what a COVID-19 presidential task force should be doing. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen Kaduna State engaging with traditional rulers. I'm not sure if other states are following that model, but I think that's an important model to follow. Right now, we need as many partnerships as possible. We need to decentralize the management mm -hmm. and make sure that we can fill in the gaps. But the, it is what it is. Are we it going to invest more in health? Last week, we saw there was a lot of rumbling on social media when the, the outlines of the new budget came out and they found out that the National Assembly was going to keep their billions to 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 up to do the Renovation. upgrade of, of, of the or Renovation. maintenance of the national assembly complex meanwhile the budgets for health and education were being slashed, slashed. and you're thinking to yourself which country will be slashing health care budgets during a pandemic mm. yeah. should it not be the reverse that is unbelievable yeah uh, right. Um, yeah, Libras, you have something. We'll move to the nation, but yes, Libras. Yes, uh, quickly. Um, um, job loss in the uh, beverage industry. It's not just beverage, beverage industry. Mm. So many industries 
you know, we'll experience job loss in the next two, one, two, three months. And then what's our plan, you know, for those job loss? We well, seems not to have any plan. Mm -hmm. And so once it happens, we we'll begin to lament and bemoan the situation of, you know, lack of jobs. And so you have, if you look at all of them, it's tied to, you know, all the headlines are, they all have one thing connecting them. Um, uh, the World Health Organization had said long before now that Nigerian has about um, one bed space to 10,000 people. Yeah, true. We have never really done anything about it. All the makeshift bed, bed spaces now, I can tell you, they probably are not included in these numbers mm. because a lot of them are still, some of them that we know are still empty. Some of these states have spent so much, making make, much more than the money that is meant to build hospitals to create bed, makeshift bed hospitals. So, and how do we now intend to make this, you know, ad hoc hospitals permanent? Mm -hmm. You know, and not wait for, for NMPC to want to build, you know, hospitals in 12 states. Money. And then that will now begin to create and generate um, um, nepotism, which states we get what and how, what are the criteria for assessing all of these states. So if care is not taken, you know, we're just, that prediction that, you know, in no time that we might just be dropping dead in numbers, we might just be approaching it because we are not doing anything to flatten the curve. We're probably mm -hmm. just waiting. The moment to we hear that then. London has flattened the curve, we might just intentionally be flattening our own curve with the numbers that we release. And, <laughs> and, that, that, um, and that might not be too, you know, too, right. too good. We'll quickly um, take the Nation newspaper. In the interest of time, um, it would be displayed. And churches reopen in Abuja, in Oshun, and Kwara. Partial rules uh, compliance in uh, there. Bureaucracy delaying Ajumobi's trial, says Makinde. Um, Obaseki Oshomole puts presidency in dilemma. Buhari may push for a neck meeting over mode of primary, right? Direct primary will guarantee social distancing. And then we have the COVID figures, um, 7.5 globally. And then in Nigeria, we are now over 12,000. Um, um, Libros, we'll just take one story in the interest of time, if you don't mind. Yes, Mobasek uh, Yoshomole put presidency in Delima. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had said, you know, Moshomole uh, is not um, a candidate in the, in the election, mm -hmm. in the primaries, and also being the national chairman who also is supporting a candidate. I think he should also, the party should do well by asking him to excuse exactly. himself. You know, um, because you can't be, you know, an umpire in your own cause. Mm -hmm. You know, excuse himself so so that you guarantee, you know, level playing field for you know other aspirants. Mm -hmm. But the situation where he's the national chairman, the head of the national working committee, he has a candidate in the election. Um, the governor, the incumbent, we all know that there's no love lost between them and. He's going into the election with him. It's almost as if the governor is going into the election with the national yeah. chairman. And he's the head of the National Working Committee. I doubt whether direct or indirect, if the governor is ever going to get, yeah. you know, a level playing field with, you know, the way things are. And, right. But if they insist on the primaries that will favor the governor, the governor also should not use state apparatus and their finances to give undue advantage to himself. Right. Okay, I, any thoughts on... Any story there before we call it a wrap? No, I just, yes, no, I, I totally agree that uh, Edo is going to be a very interesting state to watch, uh, not just the primaries, but also even the elections. And okay. I agree that, like everything around politics in Nigeria, there's rarely ever a, a level playing field. And this is where calls for electoral reform and even constitutional reform come in. Mm. Uh, for me, honestly, Edo is just an example of what we've seen over and over again since yeah. 1999 when we returned. Many governors see that their role is to pick their successors, um, at, which was what Shemale did. He thought he picked the right person that would do what he wants. And usually this, this model never works. We have so many examples from across yeah. the last 20 years. It never works, but they never give up on it. They always want to do it. And to what end? You keep saying to yourself, you want to stay in power. You want to pick the person who is going to replace you. To what end? Do we have light? Do we have water? Do we have good health and education? When are Nigerians going to start asking, what this fight to be in power? What is it for? What is it about? Is it really to represent us or to represent themselves? When you look at the state of your lives in every way, unemployment, light, health, police, brutality, 
as the liberals pointed out, the things Fela was singing about in the 70s are still with us today. We really need to take a look in the mirror, honestly. We really need to do some serious soul searching and become more active citizens. I am so blown away by the energy of the African Americans and their and their, and their their supporters in the United States demanding for change. And I keep thinking to myself, when are we going to be able to do this in Nigeria? If there's any country that needs citizens to be on the streets, sleeping there for weeks, yeah. this, that, this is the country that the needs it. We need it. We need to be on the streets for, 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 for 40 days. <laughs> but we're not there. We're yeah. not there. We're still sitting at home just looking. Hmm. It's very, very annoying. And that, with that, I'm going to close. All right. <laughs> thank you so very much. I, that's a very fierce one. Fierce closure. Uh, thank you, I, for always You're being welcome. with us. Always a pleasure. And of course, right. Libra, is always a pleasure having you both on Monday morning to take a look at the National Dailies. That's where we'll call it a wrap. Remember, the time is 8.30, Monday to Friday, here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okoye saying stay safe out there.